Hello. I've always been very proud to be able to say that I worked at Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Even as a child growing up in the country in the south of Lanarkshire, if you were really sick, you went to the Royal. And I had a cousin who was very proud to be able to say that she trained in nursing at the Royal Infirmary. So I first actually worked here, having been a Western Infirmary medical student, uh, when I was a senior house officer. That followed on a bit of a debacle when I first applied for the West of Scotland surgical rotation. When the interview started by an elderly male from one of the district general hospitals giving me quite a long lecture on how difficult it would be to do surgery when I was a woman and didn't ask a question at the end. So that was pretty difficult to follow up and I didn't get the job. I worked at Stob Hill for a year and then uh, David Carter had felt sorry for me, I think, at that first interview with 12 elderly males and me. Um, and the next year I got the plum attachment in his unit at the Royal Infirmary. So I did most of my training in Glasgow, a bit of a trip up north as a senior registrar and worked in London at St Mark's uh, briefly just before I became a consultant. So I came here as a consultant surgeon in 1993 and I think that that means that I was the first female consultant in general surgery, at least as far as I've been able to find out. There was a lady urologist called Helen Wingate, who strangely is listed as an associate specialist at the Royal Infirmary, but a consultant at Redlands, and that was in 1945. And I've heard rumours that there was a female orthopaedic surgeon sometime between the wars. So lots has changed since then. When I started at the Royal Infirmary, General surgery was divided between the old surgical block and the academic unit, which was in the new Queen Elizabeth building. And uh, nowadays, we're all in the Queen Elizabeth building in our really quite convenient location for all our inpatients where emergencies are on the top floor, uh, elective general surgery on the second floor, high dependent, sorry, on the third floor, high dependency on the second floor, ITU below there, and outpatient endoscopy and theatre are all further down in the same block. So that works pretty well. And the other thing to say is that things have changed dramatically, even post-COVID, in terms of waiting time. When I joined the Royal Infirmary, Ian Finlay was the only colorectal surgeon and his waiting list for benign disease was four years. So even after COVID, you can cheer yourself up that hopefully it's not as long as that. General surgery has also changed dramatically over the years. Uh, in 1993, Claire Emery, who was worldwide famous in pancreatic surgery, was also, also taking on a lot of inflammatory bowel disease and even did some breast cancers. Vascular surgery had a separate unit, and that's a long-standing thing at the Royal Infirmary. But everything else was together in general surgery. Since then, breast surgery has separated off, and not many breast surgeons are on the on-call rota nowadays. And even gastrointestinal surgery has divided itself into three different specialties, at least. Lastly, one of the most dramatic changes that's happened in the past 20, 30 years is that now we have lots of women in surgery. And I'm glad to say that at the Royal Infirmary at the moment, we have female surgeons in all of the main gastrointestinal specialties. So there's Carol Craig in esophageal gastric, Maria Coates in the pancreatic surgery team, and Martha Quinn and Fiona Leach in the colorectal team. We think that's a bit of an improvement, and I hope you do too. Thanks. <laughs>